So the year is 2024. How can you tell if your computer is sending data to someone else? How can you tell if a program is spying on you? And also what kind of trackers a website is loading? Some of you may have heard of the tool Wireshark, but it's kind of complicated, a little bit difficult to get into. I wanna present an alternative that I'm looking at right here, right now, that I think everybody can use at least to some extent, and it's called Fiddler. And it's just a useful skill to have as we go into the future where we have more and more info stealer malware that connects sneakily in the background that you may not be aware of. You could have backdoors running on your system right now, a botnet that you're connected to, and you may not even know. And Fiddler would be a great way to check for that. Now, the modern version of this is a cloud version, so I wouldn't recommend trying it, but anyone can download this tool by simply searching for Fiddler Classic uh, Download. And I'm gonna demonstrate what you can do with it in a second. And you can see in the background, everything our computer is connecting to but uh, this is the page you want to go to download Fiddler Classic and just give it some information and you should be able to get it up and running as I do here now what I want to highlight is the sheer amount of telemetry some of the programs they run collect and this is actually really effective because as you can see we can see the telemetry the data that our computer is sending to the internet so for example this is Windows Update related and I think most people can just make sense of this data right away but I want to show you you how in the real world can use it to make a difference. So let's just go ahead and clear this for a moment. And now I just want to load up one thing and that's going to be Firefox. And let's see what happens here. So the moment I open Firefox, there's a gazillion collections that are made, which makes sense because it's a web browser. So obviously it has to connect to the internet. But what you may not be aware of are all these telemetry connections that are just being made in the background, incoming.telemetry.mozilla.org. And that's because we are running this with default settings. Now, if you go into your settings in the browser, it doesn't tell you this anywhere when you use the product, but if you go scroll down, wait, we have to go into privacy and security first, but hidden away in the middle here, is the Firefox data collection and use section. And here it says, you allow Firefox to send technical and interaction data to Mozilla. You want personalized recommendations and you want to allow Firefox to install and run studies and all of these are checked. I don't know about you, but I don't like people running studies on me. So I just go ahead and disable all of that. And let's see if they're being honest and if this makes a difference. So I'm going to close the browser. I'm gonna do Control X to clear this again, and we're going to restart Firefox. And now if we check, it actually worked. So all of the connections that were being made for telemetry are now gone. And this is a case, obviously, of a software being honest and working as intended and being clear about the connections it's making. May not always be the case, but at least with this tool, you can now tell. I was also very curious to find the data that Microsoft sends if you use Smart Screen, which is one of their security features, every time you open an application. So you may not be aware of this, but let's say you wanna open a normal application, like a SysInternals tool, like Disk View. If I just go ahead and try to run it, we opened the tool, but in the background, guess what? There was a request made to Microsoft.com and we can actually figure out what exactly this was about. So if we check out the right-hand side of this tool, go into the headers, we can see what data was being sent. And this is a smart screen check, which means it sends a hash of the file, which is a uniquely identifiable property. So Microsoft can check if this file is malicious or not. However, this means that every time you run an application, Microsoft is getting data of what you're running on your system. And if you don't want that, what you have to do is you have to go in and disable smart screen. Let's try turning this off as well. That was for Microsoft Edge, but I guess the component that's responsible here is the one to check apps and files. So I've also turned that off and now we'll try again. As you can tell, these videos are not scripted. I'm doing this live, but hopefully we can demonstrate it. So we'll go ahead and run it again. And boom, this time, no new requests. Just to be clear though, I'm just gonna do it one more time. So we've cleaned everything up. Once again, we're just running the same thing. But this time, there's no request being made to Microsoft because it's not looking up all the files we're running in the cloud. If you're an organization that's required to keep your data private, you cannot use these features because effectively you're sending Microsoft data on what applications you're running if you have that enabled. It is not from the internet. I'm simply running an application that's offline 
from a zip file and Microsoft is still connecting to the internet and sending the hash out for a check. So you'll be surprised how many programs on your computer connect to the internet actively. But there is a good amount of privacy you can take back by changing the settings, using applications that respect your privacy a bit more, but you gotta verify, and that's where a tool like Fiddler would be super useful to have. Also, you'll be surprised how much these connections impact your computer. So for example, if I just touch any Microsoft Store app, let's just try the Clock app. You might think the Clock is something that has nothing to do with the internet, it's an offline app, but the moment I click on it, Ooh, there's an update. We're getting the update ready for you. And look what happens. We have so many connections just spawning in the background continuously. And all of this is work that your computer has to do, right? So if you have 50 different things trying to update in the background, it is going to affect your browsing experience. It is going to affect your gaming experience. And this is why I made a video earlier about deep loading Windows. And it's not just Microsoft. Imagine having 20 different programs running in the background, all trying to do stuff like this. I know some of you are going to disagree and say I'm just being paranoid and uh, this is totally normal. Just get used to it. And you know what? More power to you. I'm not telling you not to use the clock app if you like it. So I hope you found this introduction to another network forensics tool useful. Please like and share it if you did. I'd love for more people to play around with these things, find interesting stuff. And if you do find something on your computer that you can make sense of, do hop on over to our Discord and discuss it over there because I'd love to hear what you guys find when you run tools like this because sometimes you may have an HP telemetry service or a Dell thing that I've never heard of it just comes with your laptop and you had no idea it was sending so much data in the background. And yes, like I said, it's also going to be super interesting for malware. I'll end with a funny story. So I remember a popular political commentator saying they have all their phones bugged because governments are trying to keep track of what this person is doing, where they're going, because they're so influential, because they're meeting world leaders and stuff like that. And the complaint he had was not so much that they were spying on him, because he was like, I guess that comes with the job at this point. But he was annoyed by the spyware draining his phone's battery, so he'd have to buy a new phone every year. And that's actually very true. Uh, for a lot of my personal gripes with the spyware that's running with Windows and every application that we have now. I'm fine with collecting my data, but even the infrastructure to collect the data sometimes is so poorly built that it will create unintended crashes because there's no real consumer satisfaction metric there. So a lot of the times it is very poorly written code that's running in the background doing these things. And it can crash just like any other application. It can run into critical sections of code and programmers will know what I'm talking about. There might be race conditions. And as more and more applications do these things in the background, it could affect the actual thing you're trying to do. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you think it's worth trying to minimize the amount of data your computer is sending and the amount of spyware you have on it? And do you think it's gonna matter more or less in the future? Do let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe if you wanna hear more. Also want to thank the sponsor of this video, CrowdSec, an open source intrusion prevention system powered by Threat Intel from a large community of users. So if you were wondering if a particular IP address or website was malicious, you could look it up here. And for example, this one is a malicious IP. It's been running attacks aggressively and it's from Turkey. We can even see the kind of exploits it looks for. This is like an HTTP crawler. So it's going to be looking for WordPress logins and trying to brute force into systems and get remote access. But this is not just a platform to look up this information, but you can also deploy these block lists and stop attackers from connecting to your server or home network. They have quite a few of them that are totally free. So if you've got your own Linux project, you could totally deploy this or on Windows as well. And you could use Windows Defender Firewall as kind of like the blocking mechanism and it would automatically update these IPs. It's also got what they call scenarios. So you've got various built-in protections against vulnerabilities, things to prevent backdoors and remote access to your computer. So if you're running any kind of server or anything that accepts inbound connections, this is a great tool to deploy. Again, it's open source, it's extensible. You can find all the code on GitHub. So if you're looking to learn more about intrusion prevention, definitely check out CrowdSec using the link in the description. We're also going to be doing a Discord event sponsored by them. So check that 
out using link. If you want to catch me live, maybe ask me some questions. That's also going to be in the description. Our Discord hangouts are always super fun. It's a great way to meet the community and make friends. So do join me if you can. Thank you all so much for watching. This is Leo. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.